Everybody was complaining you don't dance enough in the videos. This is how you unload a Jeep in the south. Oh sh! We didn't hitch the trailer. <laughs> Introducing Rob to you guys who haven't seen him before. He's been on my YouTube with a sand buggy. You might remember he worked on. Come on, give me some tongue. <laughs> <laughs> it's in! <laughs> the first time it's ever done that, right? <laughs> well, it went right up, too. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna move that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah over and over. Yeah, a lot of yeah. times that thing's been worked on. <laughs> time to introduce this character. That's it. my new show. Yeah, he'll be having a new show, starting with me, and he'll be doing his own thing as well. The Jeep is going to be part of it. That big old monster Jeep back there, Cash Cow. <laughs> We're probably gonna rename it, I would suppose, right? I think I just dropped my nuts on the ground. Yeah, you did. We're gonna have to lift that, that thing up. back up. <laughs> All right, let me put this camera down. And I'll help you. All right, when you're ready. We're doing this two times in one day, pulling that beetle right off of this trailer. Let's see if we can do it without getting anything smashed or wrecked. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Welcome back to the Monday Mail Call. I'm your host, the Duck Man. <laughs> and this is Steve McQueen. Hey, and she's got mail, which you can see in her hands right now. <laughs> what we do every Monday is we try to collect our mail and all the things that we got during the week and try to answer the questions and stuff that people have been asking us all week. Now, you're back with us today. This is the big question Did you get a disease? I got something. Well, was it the big old nasty solar herpes? We'll talk about that in another video. <laughs> I did not have coronavirus. You did no. not get the coronavirus. The That's a good negative. thing. Which is good. I mean, by the time you got the test back, I had just about almost had my two weeks of exposure from you anyway. So it was like, it didn't really even matter anymore. As long as we knew you were good, it's really what counted. It's not like I'm coughing on you and licking you, so it's fine. Not usually, anyway. No, not it's only when I like have ice cream that's melting. Otherwise, she doesn't get that excited. <laughs> Well, first thing we got here is we got her a package. I got a package. That's right, you got a package. Yeah. I got a package. It's about this big, but that's all you get. That's okay. But this one's a little bigger than that, and it comes from somebody named... Terry Fleming. From? Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Now, Terry came on out to the car show last year. He was hoping to see Gregory. Unfortunately, Gregory didn't make it to the car show last year. And unfortunately, Eleanor's not going to make it to the car show either this year. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Sorry, guys. Little news. But let's bust this open and see what we got in there. Don't Could be it. anything. Could be anything. Could be anything. Could be anything at all. Could be a pack of condams. I hope not. Why? I still have a bunch of unused ones in my drawer. I'm very single. Unused condams in your drawers? Mm. <laughs> How to keep your Volkswagen alive. Mm. Show everybody. There it is. Look at it. That book is one of the best resources for the uh, Mechanic that is working themselves in their own little shop on their own little Volkswagen. The idiot, the idiot, <laughs> the author of this book is not an idiot. We're the idiots. But the guy who wrote this book, <laughs> he has documented himself buying a Volkswagen randomly someplace, taking it on a car trip immediately, and by the time he gets it home, it runs better than it ever has because he knows how to take care of these things with like a Swiss Army knife. So this book is pretty much that story and tells you what you need to do when certain things happen. 
So it's better than like a Chilton's manual or something in that respect because it's really good for the stuff that you need to know roadside. How do you take care of stuff right then and there? Well, you're going to be using that on your Carmen Ghia, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're probably going to start working on that Carmen Ghia very, very soon. It's bright yellow. You guys have seen it. I think it's a 70. It might be a 71. I can't remember ever. I have to check the paperwork on it. But, uh, yep, we got that. We also got a couple of other good things coming up this week. But before we get into the story, we're going to roll that intro. So please, everybody, lick your like, your comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly. And we'll be back in Thanks, just a second. Thanks, Gary. All right, you had about a minute to flip through that book. What'd you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Right off the bat, in the beginning of the book, there's somebody's little notations there about yeah. engine numbers and all kinds of different part numbers and stuff, which so was their own notes that makes more sense to themselves. Uh, red class closet. Closet. Boy, that's some handwriting. Yeah. Clawfalawful Ottawaddle. <laughs> that's what it looks like. I don't know. Clawfalawful Ottawaddle. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, a lot in this book. Very good. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, not only am I appreciative, but especially B is appreciative because she's going to keep that in her Carmen Dia. In the event that she can't reach somebody for help and doesn't know what she's doing, there's your help right there. That's the first thing you're going to consult. Absolutely for sure. Lots to learn. And I love the way he spelled complete too. I always noticed it was spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not. Yeah, nope. <laughs> anyway, this week, we got us a brand new, well, brand new to me, 1980 or 79, not really sure, Jeep. That's right, a CJ7 Jeep with an AMC 304 engine. I happen to have an AMC 304 engine in the garage. And you say, hey, Duckman, why'd you get a Jeep? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. We also, this week, just got a 1972 Super Beetle. And again, people are probably saying, hey, why'd you get a Super Beetle? Well, I actually got, uh, <laughs> Well, you know, there's a little bit of a story on that one, too, but somebody owed me something, and it has to do with that Jeep and the hand-me-down engine, which happens to be in the garage. And he owed me a, an engine because I traded him a Volkswagen engine in the past, so that's how I got the AMC engine. Now he wants the AMC engine back, and I said, you gotta give me a Volkswagen engine. So, boom, Super Beetle showed up. <laughs> he says, here's your engine. It's like, ha, ah, it's a whole car. He says, yeah, deal with it. Okay. Shall be dealt with. So now I got an engine and a whole car that I need to figure out what I'm going to do with. So we're going to talk about that one in another video because we're going to do a couple things with that. We're going to have a video where we tear the whole car apart and look through everything inside of that car. Figure out what's in there. Might find gold. Might find used condams. Boogers. Might find a cat turd. That's more likely. Yeah, I might find some scorpions. I mean, it could be anything in there. Yeah, it could be anything. You never do know inside these old Volkswagens. But we're going to tear that thing up in another video. But before we get to that, we're going to have a walk around that too in this video. And uh, we got some more projects inside the house, which we're going to talk about right now. All right, well, I don't know at what point I broke 50,000 subscribers this week, but yay me. <laughs> I've actually had this thing off because I've just been so damn busy with so many things that uh, I just completely forgot about it. You might remember last week, I had these little chips here that I was talking about. These little guys were the input chips. They can take eight different switches inputted into this thing and then sends the little signals off to a computer. So essentially it turns all my switches into digital signals. And it sends them as little blips, ones and zeros. Literally, it's a, it's a, a bit counter, if you will. Eight of them going across. And I mentioned that these little guys can be chained together. Now this is an output chip, this is an input chip. The purple color really doesn't matter. I just decided to buy this to make it a different color so it's easy to identify the differences. Well anyway, I took these little guys and I soldered on some connectors to the ends of them. And what that made it easy to do is daisy chain these guys together. So that allows me to have not just eight, but 32 different switches are available onto this little setup here. Now these being the output boards, these also have eight, and I daisy chain them together as you see right here. So this is actually a working proof of concept that I put together. And to show you how it works, I busted out my tablet. So let's go ahead and turn the headlights on. Boom, there's my headlights on. Turn the high beams on, right? Turn the headlights back off. Turn the tail lights on. Turn the high beams off. Just want tail lights on. No problem. Let's say I just want one headlight on, the right headlight. I've got that option. Let's turn the hazards on. 
pretty cool, right? Now I can change the hazards to flash with any pattern that I want. I can make them a double fast flash, then a pause, double fast flash. So there's, there's a lot of different things that I can do on that. Hazards off, left flasher on, right? Right flasher on, no problem. Then I can turn all that off. Boop, turn it off, fuel pump on, right? Ignition on, and then start the engine. So this thing is full featured. Uh, of course, I'm still adding some options to this. There's no backup lights, brake lights, and a whole bunch of other things that I'm going to be adding to it just yet. But it's coming up in the future. This thing is, is working great. This is a wonderful proof of concept. The outputs to each one of those LEDs can be run right into these relays that I have here and can control each one of those individual devices that I was just talking about, well, easily by my tablet. And any tablet, or even my phone, or even my computer at home, if this thing gets connected to the internet, that's right, this thing can put my Beetle on a Wi-Fi network and put it on the internet. And that's going to give me the ability for people to uh, demo it over the internet, and I'm probably going to do that sometime in the future when I get the car back. And I have a bunch of other things um, connected and working. I'll set up a webcam on it for 24 hours, I'll allow people to get in there for a minute at a time, and allow them to push some of the buttons and turn the lights on and off on the car with a webcam set up so you can actually see that it's working. I think that's kind of cool, and I can guarantee you that nobody's done that yet with their car on the internet. I just might be the first yet again. So this is a great proof of concept. Those little ch chips are doing what they're supposed to. These uh, relays are driven by what they call optocouplers. And what an optocoupler is, it's, it's actually it's a relay of sorts, but what it works as is there's an LED inside of the chip, and the chip LED will shine a light onto an optical sensor and as soon as that light hits it boom it closes the relay so it's pretty cool how those work it isolates the circuit all the stuff runs on three volts these relays of course are going to be switching 12 and that isolates the circuits with a beam of light so that way the 12 and the 3 don't crisscross somewhere and have a short or fry something which can kind of be a big deal but I need to build a motherboard for this. I'm going to be using this ESP32 chip. I've also got some ESP, uh, or ES, um, I think it's an ESP8266. I might be saying the wrong thing. But that's the uh, the little, little brother to this thing. It's a smaller chip, it's not as fast. And when I run the web interface on the tablet, I do notice it's a little bit slower. But uh, it's certainly, holds its own though and will work for this but I do notice there is a little bit difference in speed it's slightly laggier let's just say it's like five hundredths of a second I mean I can I can feel it I can sense it it's there but I think if you're just driving in the car and you're flipping switches you probably wouldn't notice it it's it's so quick and so it's almost near real time that it should work that way now I'm not gonna run everything in the car off of the tablet everything is not going to be uh, touchscreen based. I find that annoying. I like hard switches on things, and this is an old car. An old car is supposed to have hard switches, so it's still going to have a turn signal switch, still going to have your headlight switch, still going to have your hazard switch, all those great things that, that the car should already have. It's also going to have a bunch of push buttons on the dashboard for turning on things like the fuel pump, the ignition. Uh, of course, the ignition never could be turned on independently, but now it can be, and I kind of like that, because when you're sitting in the car, if you turn your key and you leave it on, what happens? Yeah, anybody that's uh, owned a Volkswagen before knows what happens. You fry your points. Hopefully they're in the open position, otherwise they're going to just burn themselves up. And then when you go to start the car, guess what doesn't happen? That's right, the car doesn't start. <laughs> Electronic ignitions are not immune to that either. Electronic ignitions don't like to be sitting without the car running. So I will have the ab ability to boop, hit the ignition and turn it off. And I would say that if the oil light were on for any long period of time, I could even run that into here, so that way it could kill the engine in the event the oil light comes on so you don't fry your engine. I'm still going to have a hard wired oil light on the dashboard that does not go through this because supposing the computer fails and I don't get that data you know from that light coming on the dashboard that would be bad and I'd like to be able to override it in the event something happens so I will force data from that switch on the engine into the computer at the same time parallel as I put it up on the dashboard so I have a visible light but it'll be kind of cool to um, record it as data. And then once the data gets in here, boy, there's a lot of things that I can do. And I'm not even done yet. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I say maybe I'm like 20% into this. <laughs> there is a lot more that I need to do. And setting up this input chips here is, is a big part of it. Anyways, with all that said and done, no, I haven't sold Eleanor. I'm still building stuff for her. I'm still, still got Earl working on her. Yes, there is somebody in Australia that did make me a huge offer right after the first time I took her to the car show and posted the video up. I mean, he 
he still talks to me about it, and he offered me an obscene amount of money for that car, but I don't feel it's time to sell Eleanor. And uh, I think I probably am probably going to need even a little bit more, but I'm not going to talk about how much money it is. He was going to pay all the duties and the taxes and the shipping. I mean, that was all on him. But he's a private collector, obviously has way too money. Really nice guy, though. Still harasses me all the time for that car, but nope, not ready to let her go. Anyways, you guys, uh, let's go ahead and go back to B outside. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I think that's it for today. Uh, well, we forgot one more thing. It's the beginning of the month. You know what that means? T-shirt. Yes, somebody out there just won a Duckman Cycles T-shirt. We're going to find out who the winner is right this second. All right, it's time for the random drawing. Let's see who the winner is. Let's go to our videos here. Let's see, any videos during the month of April? So let's see, everything from here all the way to here. We're going to select a video. Let's see, which one is my favorite? Um, you know what? We're going to choose the underdog video. Let's choose the tech session one. Not a lot of people commented on this one. We'll go ahead and we'll copy the link out of here. Damn it. We're going to copy the link out of here. We'll go to the random comment selector. Paste that link right in here. And we'll get the YouTube comments. And let's see here. Start randomly selecting. Phil Brindle? No, maybe not. Winner is Mark Fenlock asking, where's B at? <laughs> I'm going to call him the winner anyway, even though he clearly wasn't paying attention. That that underdog video was actually a lost video from last year. It was just something that I finally released. Uh, B wasn't in my life yet at that point. So yeah, uh, Mark Fenlock, you're the winner. Please send me an email at duckmancycles at duckshit.net. That way I can get you your prize, let me know your shirt size and your favorite color, and we'll get one sent out to you right away. Well, now we're going to change the rules on this a little bit. We're going to choose comments only that are clean, only comments that are respectable and, well, self-respecting even. Is B getting fat? No, bitch. I started fat. So if somebody says a comment, you know, like, hey, nice boobs, like every other idiot that leaves those comments, I'm sorry, we're going to reject you, and we'll just have to pick another winner. In this case, Mark Fenlock, hey, you're the winner. Once again, email me. We'll make sure we get a T-shout out to you right away. Thanks so much. All right, and thanks to the winner. Uh, once again, whoever wants to be entered in any of my contests for the T-shirt each month, all you have to do is leave a comment in any one of my videos, on any of my channels. I will go back and check my most recent videos, randomly choose one, and a random comment will be selected, and that person will be sent a piece of Duckman Cycles merchandise. You can get a t-shirt like this in any color that you want that's provided, and any size that you want that I offer. So please, as always, leave a comment down below. You will be entered in the contest. Thanks so much, you guys. As always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly, check out B. McQueen's channel. She's got her own YouTube, she's got her own Patreon, she's got her own Instagram. She's got all that stuff, and you can find it rare. Where can you find it? Duckshit.net. Duckshit.net. That's right, right up on my website. So please, you guys, visit the website. Check out my links to my other channels. Check out the links to all the bees stuff. And uh, she's got a book on her head. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back next time. <laughs>